Welcome back to my corner of the internet for some more SIBO myth busting and practical advice. In today's video, we're going to be talking about when do you take a prokinetic? Do you take it during your kill phase when you're on your antibiotics or antimicrobials? Or do you wait until afterwards to prevent a relapse? The latter opinion is very popular amongst SIBO doctors and SIBO experts. They'll tell you do your kill phase first and then think about a prokinetic later. But unsurprisingly, I have a different opinion than the rest of the SIBO world, so it seems, and I'm going to share that opinion in this video so that you can make an informed decision and ultimately kick SIBO to the curb. To start us off, I'm gonna reveal the answer right here and now and be short-winded for the first time in my professional life. The answer, in my opinion, is you both it. And I'm gonna get into why I think that is, but in my opinion, we don't need to think of it as like a now or later. We could possibly do both. But first I wanna give you the 30 second crash course of what is SIBO and why does motility matter, just in case we have some newbies among us. So here is your digestive system, mouth to anus. You are one hollow tube all the way through. And as a lot of us know by this point, it's totally normal and rad and awesome to have lots and lots of bacteria and fermentation happening in the colon. That's what we want. This is why doctors have been recommending fiber forever. This is why we've been recommending fruits and vegetables. I mean, one of the many redeeming qualities of fruits and vegetables forever. It's because we want to feed these guys that live in our colon. But the thing about the digestive system is that most of your bugs should live here. And we should have only a speckling by comparison throughout the rest of the GI tract. Now it's worthy to note that the small intestine and the stomach and the esophagus are not sterile. They shouldn't be free of bacteria, but the quantity is not nearly that of the colon. And as the name implies, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth occurs when we have an overgrowth or an increased quantity of bacteria somewhere in the small bowel where frankly, we don't want them to hang out. And that's when all the weird stuff happens. That's when you start getting these icky symptoms and you feel like garbage because we have too many bugs hanging out in the wrong place. If these same bacteria were down here, we would have no problem with their existence whatsoever, or at least based on the knowledge that we have of SIBO right now. So where motility comes along is that motility is like the current flowing in a stream. And we want that current to be always moving and always moving from mouth to anus, never in the opposite direction. And we don't want a lot of stagnation or stuckness in the system. When we get stagnation and that motility fails to move those contents, that's where we start to get this overgrowth kind of thing happening and the festering and the fermentation and all of the lovely symptoms that we associate with SIBO. So in my clinical practice and in FODMAP Freedom, my group coaching program, I pretty much always treat SIBO as though it's a motility disorder first and foremost. And then we can get into the other things like the killing of the bad guys, the feeding of the good guys, the histamine, the vagus nerve, all of that other stuff. But in my mind, and I will say I get good results doing this, I think that SIBO is primarily a motility issue first and foremost until proven otherwise. So here we have it. So the goal is that we want good motility and that will sweep and clean up any bacteria and any food particles that might be in the small intestine and brush them down into the colon and then everybody's happy schmappy. Well, that's what a prokinetic is gonna do for us. A prokinetic is something that helps regulate and stimulate your motility. Now it's worth pausing here and saying that prokinetics don't intrinsically speed you up or slow you down. So that's why they're not called laxatives and they're not called anti-diarrheals. So these are safe to take if you have constipation or diarrhea or mixed IBS or somewhere in between, but rather they seem to have a homeostatic kind of feel where they're bringing you closer to center if you're too slow, they'll speed you up. If you're, too, uh, if you're too fast, they'll slow you down and they bring you back to center. So I really love using prokinetics, A, because they tend to be very well tolerated, but also really, really, really impactful. And I've been using something that I've called the prokinetic speed dating challenge with my patients and my FODMAP Freedom students for many years. And I can tell you that of the herbal prokinetics that people try, when they try all of them in a process I'll explain a little bit later, you end up finding about 98% of people with IBS or SIBO or both wind up finding at least one herbal prokinetic that they really like and helps with their SIBO symptoms. So 10 out of 10 would recommend. But here's the thing. The idea in the SIBO community, largely right now, is all right, you've got this overgrowth, the bad boogeyman, 
and we go in with something like an antibiotic or berberine or FC Cidal or whatever it might be, and you go in and you kill all those bad guys, and then after the fact, it's almost like an afterthought that we think about, gosh, golly gee, we, we might need some good motility to prevent that from happening again. But I'm over here screaming from the rooftop saying, why can't we do both? Why don't we start the person on the prokinetic ASAP and that way, A, they start to feel better faster. B, if you do need antimicrobials, which not everybody does, you won't need as heavy handed of an approach in my experience with this. And B, C, sorry, one, two, three. Um, and C, the other thing is if you've already started on the prokinetics and you've got your motility humming along, by the time you're done with your kill phase, you've already not maxed out your motility, but you're already at that therapeutic level with your motility. So that motility can keep brushing stuff away and doing its job for you. If you wait until the day after your antimicrobials to start a prokinetic, that prokinetic isn't gonna be a dang miracle worker on day one for you. So if, if we're using imaginary numbers here, if whatever the prokinetic does for you, if we're saying that it's gonna get up to 100% of its effect eventually, you're not gonna take the first pill and get 100% effectiveness on the first pill. What's usually gonna happen is you take the first dose or two, and maybe you start off, you know, I, no, I'm not gonna draw it out. Maybe you start off and you have a 10 or perhaps 20% improvement in the first day or two. Then you take it for a little bit longer and you start getting in the 30, 40% range. Usually what I'm finding when I have people do my challenge process is that you start to kind of maximize whatever a prokinetic is going to do for you, or you start getting stronger hints of what it's doing for you around day like maybe five, six, or seven for most people. So again, if you're waiting until the last day of your antimicrobials and then you're starting your prokinetic, that lag time doesn't seem like a lot. But that six, seven, maybe longer day lag time in between your kill phase and your prokinetics might give the bacteria just enough time to start creeping up or overgrowing and stagnating in a way that you do not want. So again, in my mind, this is not a one or the other. In my mind, we start people on prokinetics immediately. We fiddle with it and find the prokinetic that works for them because not all of them do. And then we keep that prokinetic in for several months while we're managing the root causes, perhaps treating the SIBO itself. And once we get the person feeling better for a prolonged period of time, at least a month or two, that's when I'm usually saying, okay, go ahead and start weaning down on your prokinetic. But I think that in the SIBO world, we underappreciate prokinetics largely because we're not using them right. Now I just said that we're not using them right. And I'll tell you, I think I'm using them right. I know that makes me sound so much like an egomaniac, but hear me out. So like I mentioned earlier before, when I do my process for prokinetic speed dating, I find that 98% of my IBS and SIBO patients end up finding at least one herbal prokinetic that they like and it helps them with their symptoms. I don't know anyone else or any single product in the SIBO world that can bat that kind of number. 98% effectiveness for a single tool is pretty darn astonishing if I do say so myself. But it's not because I have like some magic prokinetic formula or that I have some magic algorithm to see like which one is gonna work for you. It, I don't know which one is better for constipation and which one's better for diarrhea and which one's better for bloating. It doesn't appear to have that kind of a pattern. Rather, what I do to get that 98% success rate with prokinetics is that I gave up. I said, screw it. I cannot figure out which one is gonna be best for the individual person. And I embraced that and I embraced the lack of knowledge we have on this topic. And I started doing my prokinetic speed dating challenge. So what I do is I painstakingly go through and I put a one week supply of each of the herbal prokinetics that are available today in a little baggie. And I label it and zip it up. And I mail that to every single new patient and every single FODMAP Freedom student. And then I have them go through the experience. I have them take notes about which one helped and which one didn't help, which one they loved, which one they hated. And when they go through that whole process, most people report that the vast majority of the products seem to do absolutely nothing for them. But then 98% of the time, there's that one product or the two products that they really, really, really liked. And that's it. It's like the most scientific and the most unscientific process in the whole universe. 
Again, I just bag him up. I tell people, have at it, report back. And then thankfully, I have wonderful students and clients, and they have been giving me that feedback for years and being my little guinea pigs. And then I can bring that data here to you on YouTube. Now, there's no pattern. There's no prokinetic that's best for constipation versus diarrhea versus bloating. It really is a crapshoot. But I can tell you statistically that one product usually ends up winning. And then there's another two that are kind of in the number two slot. And then all the other ones are very hit and miss as far as when people will like them. So if you don't think that you want to work with me privately or you don't want to join FODMAP Freedom, which side note, you totally should because it's awesome, you could benefit from my data collection at least a little bit with what I publish here on YouTube. And that being said, it is about high time for an update, my friends. So I did my first data collection down low on the best prokinetic for IBS and SIBO in 2020. And now it's time. I am gathering the data for the next round and I'm gonna be publishing that on this channel sometime right around the new year. So stay tuned and I'm gonna share my updated version of this experiment with some new products that were thrown in at 2020 and some new updated data. And I think that you will be really pleasantly surprised to see who wins and who's still losing. And I won't, I won't reveal anything yet until I look at the numbers themselves, but I have a sense that the overall pattern is gonna be relatively similar to that first video. But uh, yeah, stay tuned and I will be sharing that right around the new year. Or if you wanna start your new year off with some real prokinetic goodness and some real sciency data collection, you could come be one of my little guinea pigs in FODMAP Freedom because we're actually enrolling again in the new year. So January 15th is the date to look out for. If you're on the wait list, you're gonna be the first to get an email and the first to reserve your spot. And then I will open up the registration and, and let people register here off of YouTube or Instagram about a week after that. So if you want first dibs on enrollment for FODMAP Freedom before we potentially have to close the doors again, then go ahead and join the wait list. I'm gonna link it in the description down below. And then, like I said, if you wanna just try all of the prokinetics and figure out which one is the best for you, rather than having to buy bottle after bottle after bottle to find your one magical product, come over to FODMAP Freedom, man. We've got garlic, we've got onions, sometimes we even have wheat. I have students wrapping up the program right now as I'm filming this, and they are doing so well. They're pooping like champions, their bloating is gone, they're eating everything again. Some people have already reintroduced gluten, it's so fun and we really try to support you through the process. We have the curriculum that you get every week and then we have six live Q and A's and we have an email address that you can email back and forth with to get feedback. It is such an immersive and supportive environment. I really go out of my way to make this a life-changing experience. And honestly, if I don't change your gut health and if I don't change your life in that program, I'll give you your money back. So there's really no harm, no foul. Come check out FODMAP Freedom, join the wait list, and then you too can do the prokinetic speed dating and find the product that's right for you. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.